Let's solve a couple of questions on first law of thermodynamics. For the first one, we have two cylinders A and B of equal volume, which are filled with the same monoatomic gas. Cylinder A has a fixed volume while B has a movable piston attached. On adding Q, on adding heat Q, A's temperature rises by 40 kelvins. How much will B's temperature rise on adding the same amount of heat Q? Okay, as always, pause the video and first try this one on your own. Alright, hopefully you gave this a try. Now let's try to see what the question is saying. We have two cylinders. So first let's make those two cylinders. So this is the first one and the volume of the first cylinder is fixed. Alright, so we make, we fix this. This is not moving anywhere. This is cylinder A and then we have cylinder B. So here we have the second cylinder, but now this one has a movable piston. So let's show that with this. Here is the movable piston and this is, this is B. Some heat is added to cylinder A because of which the temperature rises by 40 kelvins. Now let's think about how that could look like. The volume of cylinder A is not changing. So from the first law of thermodynamics, we know that when heat is added to a system that Q, this is equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done by the gas. Now there is no change in volume. There is no delta V. Delta V basically it's zero. So if you think about the work done in the first case in, in cylinder A, work done we know this is equal to P delta V. But if delta V is zero, that means the work done is zero. So all the heat that is added, it is used to change the internal energy of the gas in cylinder A. So this Q really, this is equal to delta U for the first case. And, and let's write that A to show the change in internal energy of A and the heat that is added to cylinder A. But for the second case, when we have some heat that is being added, let's show the heat. So this is, this is on look. Okay. So here has, here is heat. This heat is being added to cylinder B, but this piston can move. Let's think about what could happen when we add heat to a cylinder of some gas. So the gas molecules, they will gain some internal energy, right? They will start moving faster. They will start colliding with the walls faster. That will, that will lead to increase in the pressure. And those gas molecules, they will also collide with the piston of this cylinder. So the piston will move up and it will move up and the final position could look somewhat, could look somewhat like this. So let's say the piston has moved up slightly and we can ask ourselves still, when will the piston move up? So there is some pressure initially that this gas has. There is some pressure initially when we add some heat, the gas molecules, they start moving, they start colliding with the piston, they, the piston moves up. And finally, the piston can stop moving when the gas regains its original pressure, when the pressure again is P. But because of this, there is some change in volume. We can see the volume has increased in this case. There is a delta V. So there is some work done by the gas. So now again, let's use the first law for the second case. So we have Q, which is equal to delta U plus W. Now here W, really that is P delta V there is some change in volume and delta U for a bone atomic gas, we can write that as three by two, three by two N R delta T. So heat added to the second cylinder Q B, this is equal to three by two N R delta T plus P delta V. So now we know that the heat added is the same. It's the same heat. So we can equate Q A with Q B. And when we do that for that, I'll have to make some space. So let me do that. Now here we have Q A, which is equal to Q B. So we can write, we can write Delta U for A and that is three by two N R Delta T. This is equal to three by two N R Delta T for B plus P Delta V. And using the ideal gas law, we can write P Delta V as we can write P Delta V as N R Delta T for B. So when we do that, this becomes three by two N R Delta T. This is for A, this is for A, this is equal to three by two N R Delta B, Delta T B plus N R Delta T B. So one thing gets canceled off. We can see that three by, not three by two, but N R, this gets canceled off. And what remains is three by two, three by two into 40. So let's place 40 here for, for A, this is equal to three by two into what we need to figure out. Let's call that X plus plus x some more. So three by two x plus x, the right hand side becomes five x by two. And this is, this goes by 20 and this becomes 60. So 60 is equal to five x by two. Just again, reminding x is delta TB. And when we solve this, x comes out to be equal to 24, 24 Kelvins. So this right here, this is 24 Kelvins. 
All right, let's look at one more question. Here we have five moles of a gas which are taken through two processes as shown below. We can see that A, B and B, C. The gas starts at 400 kelvins at A. All right, let's also write that 400 kelvins at A. And when it reaches C, it returns to the same temperature. So this is also 400 kelvins. Also in going from A to B, the gas expands seven times in volume. Find the total heat absorbed by the gas. All right, we need to figure out the total heat. So let's try and think about this total heat. We need to figure out Q. Again, let's let's think back to what the first law of thermodynamics is. So first law says Q, this is equal to heat that is added to the system. This is equal to change in internal energy plus the work done by the gas. So now here we see that the two processes, they start off from 400. They all, they're also ending at 400. There is no change in temperature, which means there is no change in internal energy. So delta U really, this is just zero. That means that the heat that is absorbed by the gas, that is equal to the total work done. So if we are able to figure out the total work done, then that's the heat. Now the question is, how do we figure out the work done? Well, this is a PV curve. So the area under this curve, that should give us the total work, right? And things are a little simpler because for this process BC, there is no delta V for the process BC. Delta V is zero. So work done in this process, in the process BC, that is zero. So that means we need to figure out the work done in the process AB. And that will be the area under this under this line. So work done in the process AB, work done in the process AB, this is equal to area, area under the curve AB. Okay. Now this we know is P delta V. This is P delta V. But the problem is that we don't know what P is. We don't know what delta V is. We know that the volume is expanding seven times. So that really means that really means that volume at A, if we call that VA, the volume at B would be seven VA. It is expanding seven times. That will be the volume at B. But we don't know what the pressure is. Let's see what we know. We know that temperature is 400. We don't know what temperature at B is. But if we can somehow figure out the temperature at B, we will know what delta T is. And from ideal gas law, we can write P delta V as NR delta T. Delta T is TB minus TA. So all we need to do is figure out the temperature at B. When we do that, we use that over here. That is the work done. That is the heat absorbed by the gas. Okay, so now can we do that? Can we figure out the temperature at B? We know that the pressure at A and B are the same. So let's let's write that pressure at A and B, it's equal to each other. What is pressure? That is NR, PA would be NRTA divided by VA. This is NRTB divided by VB. Well, NR gets cancelled. Now we have VA, VB, we know what VB is, right? VB is 7VA, that's given in the question. It is just 7VA. So even the volume factor is getting cancelled. So that's that's good. VA gets cancelled. Now we can figure out TB. TB really comes out to be equal to 7TA. TA is 400, so 7TA, this becomes 2800 Kelvins. All right, okay. So now we can work out the work done. So this is NR. TB minus TA, 2800 minus 400, that is 2400. We know what N is, right? That is 5 moles. We know R, it's there in the question, 8.3. I encourage you to pause the video and work out this calculation, NR delta T. Okay, when you do that, you should get work done as, this is 99,600 joules and the work done by the system is equal to the heat that is absorbed by the gas because delta u is zero so this comes out to be equal to 99600 that is the heat absorbed by the gas all right you can try more questions from this exercise in the lesson and if you're watching on youtube do check out the exercise link which is added in the description